The successful test of a first nuclear-based bomb changed our world forever. It was a result of three years of very secretive work of a team of allied scientists under the command of Robert Oppenheimer, codenamed the Manhattan Project. Oppenheimer disclosed that on that moment of the first ever nuclear explosion called Trinity, the words of the Hindu holy book, the Bhagavad Gita, went through his mind. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. The Manhattan Project, culminating in the Trinity test explosion, was the result of famous scientists like Albert Einstein, Ernst Rutherford, Niels Bohr and Enrico Fermi's progress with the study of atomic and subatomic particles and the realization they could be harnessed to create massive amounts of energy. The Trinity explosion was of the fission type, where atomic nuclei are split in smaller elements. The later developed fusion bomb works exactly opposite by fusing smaller atomic nuclei together into larger elements. Both processes release extreme amounts of energy, thus proving Albert Einstein's formula E is mc square. That mass and energy are both are but different manifestations of the same thing. The bomb used for the Trinity test, called the gadget, consisted mainly of the radioactive element plutonium. In the gadget, two half spheres of plutonium are surrounded by a bunch of explosives. These would press the spheres together upon detonation and so would start the fission process, releasing all the energy. The huge steel gadget containing this was hoisted up to a steel tower around 30 meters, 100 feet, above the surface. The detonation took place from a shelter miles away from the explosion point, ground zero, where a part of the Manhattan Project staff was able to film and look at the explosion. After the explosion, ground zero became the object of research. Planes flew over it to capture it from the sky, and when the initial radioactivity had subsided enough, Teams drove out to visit the site in person. The erected steel tower was completely gone and later studies showed it was actually shattered in multiple pieces and not evaporated as one thought initially. On the surface of Ground Zero, the scientists found a crust-like material about 1 to 2 centimeters thick of what appeared to be a molten glass-like substance. This material became known as trinitite, after the name of this first atomic test. And this trinitite is the Wunderkama object of interest for this video. I have it as a couple of smaller fragments sealed inside this Erlenmeyer flask in my cabinet. Research from the Trinity site confirmed this material consisted of molten and clumped together sand from the explosion. Initially, one thought the immense shockwave and heat of the explosion fused this material together, almost similar as how a chef creates the hard layer of molten sugar on top of a creme brulee. Later models, however, confirmed that after the initial blast, the surrounding loose sand and rocks were sucked towards the core of the explosion, rose a few miles high into the fireballs, were molten, tumbled around and then rained down back to the surface. In this case, the trinitite layer is actually the first fallout of a nuclear explosion ever. Trinitite itself is mostly just sand or rock and hence consisting out of silica, molten, due to the heat, it turned to a glass-like substance. The combination of all factors involving the explosion turned it mostly green, from a sand brown to light washed out green. Depending on some of the other available elements at the site, it can sometimes contain traces of copper, from the electric wiring in the bomb, 
turning it reddish or iron from the steel tower, turning it more dark brown or black. However, true trinitite has a very specific spectrum. As a result of the use of plutonium isotopes for the actual bomb, analyzed with a gamma spectrograph, it will disclose the several typical isotopes present in the trinitite and are unique for the site and material. This graph ultimately can distinguish fake trinitite from the real stuff. Even when well-created fakes have sometimes been made radioactive after the fact to support false evidence, they originate from the atomic bomb. It is not surprising that actual trinitite is, though slightly, radioactive. Not in a way it is very harmful, unless you would swallow it. I do not have a radioactivity or Geiger meter myself, but in this YouTube video from a YouTube channel called Mitch, you can hear the difference in radioactive activity of a piece of trinitite and the regular background normal levels of radiation. I will link this video in the description. Trinitite was free for the grabs for a couple of years from the Trinity test site after the work was done there. But considering the possible danger of the spread of this nuclear waste, the US government decided in 1953 to shovel the top layer of Trinitite away and bury it. This means that all current available Trinitite is everything there is and ever will be. This has, especially in later years, led to increasing prices of the material and more and more fake material finding its way to the market for collectors. You can still buy it, it is not cheap given the price per gram, but it is also not extremely expensive. The main trouble is it is harder and harder to get as supplies run out. I will link a trusted dealership in the description of this video and just as a reminder i am not sponsored at all by them i just like them it's a good shop so if you want some trinitite check out that link the trinity site where the explosion took place can actually be visited nowadays and is a historical landmark since 1965. because the site is still on military restricted land it is only open to the public twice a year in April and October. I will link the details for a visit in the description. Do not think that visiting the site will allow you to get some Trinitite though. As already mentioned, all the Trinitite has been removed and if you are lucky to stumble upon a piece, it is a federal assault ending in a huge fine or imprisonment if you do decide to take it with you. Thank you all again so much for watching. I will leave links in the description below to other interesting sites. And as a reminder, I am absolutely not sponsored by any of these uh, sites. If you want to learn more about Trinitite, then uh, just go check them out. I hope you enjoyed this third Wunderkammer video and the previous two. And please consider liking and subscribing below. Um, it really helps me to get the word out the channel exists. And it allows me to gradually make better videos for all you intellectual people. See you next time in The Wunderkammer.